Hello again and welcome to this series of videos on Picket, Robot Vision Made Easy. In past videos, we already explained how we tell Picket where it should look for objects and what kind of objects it should look for. In this video, we will cover the topic of telling Picket how to pick a part, how to pick an object that it already detected. A pick point is where a part can be picked by a robot. And what constitutes a good pick point really depends on the shape of the part, on the gripper that you're using, but might also depend on your actual application. For instance, if we have a socket part like this one, we could say that a good pick point would be with a two finger gripper to grasp it like this. And if it's on the other side, I would grasp it like this. That makes sense. But if in the other hand, I'm using the same part, but I'm using a suction gripper, then picking here in the center is a really bad idea because for suction, what's relevant is to have smooth flat surfaces. So for suction, it would make sense to have pick points that are probably on the sides of the part. And the same goes for the back of the suction. Also, when we specify a pick point, we have that applications often tolerate some variation in the nominal pick point that we specify. For instance, if we use a two finger gripper for this socket part, we could probably allow some degree of variation in the orientation along this direction and it would work just fine. Also, if we're picking the same part with the suction cup, because we have these flexible bellows, then we might allow even more uh, variation of the nominal pick point. We could say that we allow tilting around the cone from the nominal pick orientation, but we might also say that along the approach direction, we also allow there to be a full circular symmetry. Something similar would happen if we have a ring-like object like a tape roll. If we grasp it with a two-finger gripper, we would have a full circular symmetry around the object. And then maybe we could also tolerate, tolerate a little bit of wiggle room uh, of the fingers. So apart from specifying exactly where picket should go and the variation, it's often interesting to also say, and this is the shape of the robot tool that I'm going to use. And this is especially useful when we want to perform collision checks. Picket is able to perform checks between a robot tool and the bin and other objects that might be inside the bin. And then Picket exposes three different tool model types with geometries that closely resemble commonly used end effectors. The three models that we have right now in Picket is a cylindrical model that approximates a single suction cup or a single magnet. We have a box-like tool, which approximates a row of suction or magnet elements. And then we have a general purpose two-finger gripper. You can see in this example picture um, that it can be a really good approximation of a real life setup. Here we have a two-finger gripper with a long extension rod. And then there's some additional optional elements that you can toggle on and off, such as a sphere that kind of represents the wrist area of the robot. And if you have the camera mounted in the flange of your robot, if you have camera on robot, then you can also optionally add a box that represents a collision geometry for the camera. So it can often be the case that Picket can detect an object. It can say, I can find it, it's there, but for some reason it's not pickable. So to increase the likelihood that a part is pickable, there's two things that we recommend uh, doing when you specify your part. One is to use multiple pick points. So if it makes sense for your part and for your tool, you should specify as many as make sense. 
Here we have an example where of the two possible pick points on the top of the socket, one is not good because if we would pick the part from there, we would collide with the bin, but the other one is clear for picking, which is, a, which is definitely a good choice. And we also recommend that if it also makes sense for your application to use the feature of flexible pick orientations, such that if you have a circular shape and you have full circle symmetry, you should represent that. Because it allows you, especially if your tool model is bulky or if your bin is highly cluttered, it allows Picket to make smart decisions on which would be the best pick point to pick this part and not run into other things. Here in this example pictures, we briefly show the two types of collisions that we already mentioned Picket can detect. Collisions between the tool and the bin, and collisions between the tool and another object, which is not the one that we're trying to pick presently. Apart from things that relate to detecting individual parts, it is also often the case that Picket finds multiple detections in a single run. And when this happens, we have what we call the pick strategy, which says it instructs Picket, okay, um, if multiple objects are detected, which one should I pick first? The most typical strategy when you do bin picking is to pick the top one first, the topmost part. But there are other strategies that you might choose to use depending on your application. For instance, if you're depalletizing, you might want to run left to right or up to down. I don't know. And then other than that, uh, when pick points have uh, flexibility specified for them, Picket can try to align as much as possible with a preferred orientation that you specify. Uh, here we have a simple example where we are picking ring-like objects. And then if our pick points don't have any flexibility, then the way Picket will send the, the end effector will be random, as you can see in the leftmost picture. But if you say, you know what, these parts, they actually have full circle symmetry, so the pick point, which is a single one, can freely rotate in this direction. So when this happens, what Picket will do is that it will align as best as possible the pick frames with what you specify. For instance, here we are saying that the x-axis, which is red, should be parallel to the x-axis of the picket reference frame. And you can see that it is the case for almost ob all objects, except the ones where doing this would involve a collision with the bin. In these cases, picket will move away from the preferred orientation and will favor making the object pickable instead of aligning with your preference. So now that we have explained the basics of pick points and pick strategies, the proposal is to go to the Picket web interface and do it in practice. So right now, I am at the point where we left last time when we said, okay, we defined a model for our part. We are in the detection tab. And now if you want to specify how to pick the object, we have to move to the picking tab, the rightmost one. And then here we see again that we have the model that we defined, but we don't have any pick points. So the first thing that I will do is say, I will add a pick point and I will look at it. And then what we have here first is a set of offsets in both position and orientation that you can specify with respect to this origin that we see. Now, for the gripper that I'm using and the TCP that I will use in the robot, I know that the fingers move along the y-axis of the TCP. So I should probably, for my first pick point, I should add a rotation around C such that I align the y-axis, which is the one in which the fingers displace, with the direction of the actual displacement. 
Something else that I would like to add is that we already said that uh, for this application, we tolerate some wiggle room, some tolerance. So I will enable flexible pick orientations. And I will say that I will allow tilting with respect to the Y axis. And then here you, you can see that we have a graphical representation of this wiggle room that we specified. 20 degrees, I think is enough for what we want. We could make it larger, we could make it smaller, but I think the default value is, is enough for our purposes. Now, one thing that I would also want to do is that picking this part like this is also the same as picking the part like that. So there's like a 180 degree symmetry, uh, which has no effect from the point of view of picking, but does have an effect uh, from the point of view of robot motions. So if you would like to minimize the amount of robot motions that we do, it would be interesting to have the two possibilities defined and then pick it, we'll choose the one that is closest to our preferred alignment, what we were saying before. So to do this, I will duplicate the pick point that we already have. I will only make this one visible, so it's easier to, to define. And the offset that we specified before of 90 degrees, I will make it minus 90. And you'll see here how it will flip 90 degrees. The flexibility is the same, so we can leave that as it is. And now we have defined the two pick points for the top. But we should also define some pick points for the case when we pick the object from down below. And to do this, I will add yet another pick point. And what I will do for this pick point is make it point downward. So to do this, I will add a 180 degree flip in X. And I already have Y in the correct direction of my finger displacement, so this is all good. The only thing that I need to do now is add some flexibility. And as we did for the top part, I will duplicate this pick point and add one that is flipped by 180 degrees. Okay, so now we have four pick points, which allow us to pick the part as we would like. I will save the product file that we are keeping so far. And then if we go to the next step for the pick strategy, I will keep the ordering strategy highest product, so the one that is highest will be sent first to the robot. And there is this option here that I will leave the value as it is, but we can let Pickett discard objects that are too, too tilted away from the vertical. Typically what would happen is that the robot might do strange motions when it approaches the object, or it might also collide with the bin, but this will be detected anyway uh, by collision detection. And then finally, we have here the options that prevent collision with the tool. So right now, we don't have any kind of tool collision prevention enabled. So if I run a detection, I can see that I have five object detections that look good. But if I inspect them, I see that, well, maybe some of them could have collisions with the bin, such as this one. So I will enable collisions with the bin and also with other objects. And when I do this, I have the option now to select what kind of tool I would like to use. And because we are using this two finger gripper, I will change it to a two finger gripper which I had previously configured to approximate uh, the shape that I have in my gripper of my setup. So if I do this, you can see that the different primitives that constitute the gripper, like the cylinder, the fingers, uh, 
can be tuned such that you can dimension them uh, however you want. And then we have these optional elements like the base sphere that might represent the wrist of the robot or the camera box in case you have camera on robot, which you can also move around and resize. I will not add the camera because we don't, we don't have it now. Uh, if I now run a new detection, having collision prevention enabled, we can see that this object that we were looking before is unpickable because it will result in a collision with the bin. And actually, because of the way this, is, this part is oriented, the flexibility that we specified will not help us to make that object pickable. But for instance, here, yes, here we're actually using the flexibility to make the object pickable. For other parts, like this one, that is looking straight up, there's no risk of collision. We pick it nominally. We use a nominal pick point that we defined. So right now we have come to the point where we are able to detect parts and Picket can also select an adequate pick point that the robot tool can reach without going to collision with the bin and without going to collision with other objects in the scene. So now that we have done this, the next step would be to translate these results to the robot and get it to pick. Thanks for watching.